Hi, welcome back to Box Delights. Today we're playing World Breakers Advent of the Carnates, designed by Elie Amir. This is a two-player dueling card game, but it does come with a solo mode, and that's what we're going to play today. And I should tell you, the designer sent me this as a review copy so I could demonstrate the solo mode for you. Let's get into it then. The solo mode has you playing against an automated opponent and the automaton is card driven. There's a campaign, a 10 chapter campaign that we're going to work our way through. You start on chapter one, which is kind of simple and straightforward. <laughs> so although I did lose my first game, so it is challenging. And as you progress, you're going to be building up your deck. So there is a deck building or deck construction. It's kind of a hybrid, I guess, because we're playing a campaign. So you start with a fixed set of cards, and as you progress, you'll get the choice of adding cards to your deck, making your deck stronger. But of course, the automaton also becomes stronger as you play through this narrative campaign. There's tons of gameplay in here because you have to beat the chapter to progress. And if you lose, you just replay the chapter and obviously, hopefully, learn from the mistakes you've made. I've played this one two-player, and it's fantastic as a dueling card game with a fixed set of cards. It comes with a number of different factions, and I mean, some of these I've not even opened yet, right? Um, I played a two-player with another friend's copy, and this is, like I say, the review copy I was sent to show you the solo rules. You play with a fixed deck of cards for each faction that you play, but there is a draft mode where you can then start drafting your own deck, mixing the factions, playing a single faction, multi-faction decks, and there's tons of variety in this. But let's start with the campaign. And the campaign, because you're constructing or building your deck as you go, it does kind of balloon into this uh, multiple paths of variability if, if you replay the campaign because you can pick different cards and build your deck in different ways. So not wanting to spoil the campaign too much, I'm going to start with chapter one. The game is set in the world of the great Mongol Empire in the late 13th century. We take on the role of two world breakers, recruiting followers, developing locations, fighting for power. In the solo game, we start with the world breaker Marco Polo. This is who we're going to play. We're going to be taking on Kutalun, which is our, our opponent. They don't need a world breaker card actually, so we'll put that aside for now. But they do have a campaign deck. The instructions tell us <laughs> have a look on page 31 of the rule book. And it's going to ask us to set up some decks, okay, setting up the campaign. This is our starter deck. This is the starter deck for the automaton, and then there's a draft deck. So I've set these up already. So you're going to be grabbing a selection of cards from each of the four different factions. They're not called factions, they're called guilds. They're called guilds, okay? Where Marco Polo is in the star guild, so we'd be primarily the, the star guild. You're going to grab one of these standing trackers as well. This will record your standing with the guild. And as you increase your standing within the guild, you can play more powerful cards from that guild. We'll see that as we get going. So this is our starting deck. Kutalun, or the Automaton, is from the Earth Guild. So they've primarily got Earth Guild cards. Again, it's in the, the book. All right, so that's the second deck. All right, deck for me and a deck for them. We're going to take Marco Polo and put him to one side. And if you flip him over, he's actually got a special ability. Okay, each world breaker, each of the four different world breakers, Earth, Stars, Moon, and Void. And then there's a bunch of neutral cards as well. So you might have some neutral cards in your deck. And as I say, when you're drafting, you can actually end up with a mixed guild deck. We're going to see that in the solo campaign as well, because the third deck you're going to get is create is called the draft deck. That's these cards here, and that's this deck. So you're using a subset, and these are the set of cards that you can build your deck with. As you move through the campaign, you might be rewarded with new cards to add to your deck. And there's a mix of cards in here. Some are from the Star Guild, and some are from the Void Guild. So you can end up potentially with a mixed guild deck. You don't have to. It depends how you construct your deck as you go along. We'll see that 
as it happens. Now, there is a little typo in here. There's a card that says Burst of Creativity. It's actually called Throws of Fancy. So look out for that when you're building out the draft deck. All right. We're going to give the draft deck a shuffle because we're not going to know which cards are going to be available to us when we reach and succeed through this campaign. We'll see this at the end. All right. But set that aside for now. That's our draft deck. We start with one standing in the guild that we begin as. So in the Star Guild, Marco Polo has one standing. We're also going to shuffle up our deck. Okay. And we're going to shuffle up the deck for the automaton as well. All right, stop it set. This is used for the advent of the Carnate Cello campaign. Do not shuffle it. <laughs> All right. When you're ready to begin, set this card aside and follow the campaign. And there's some, a little reference card here of rules for the solo game. But the first thing you're going to do is take the top 12 cards of this deck. Okay, and then this is going to form an automaton deck. You're going to shuffle it up, but these cards are double sided. Okay, on one side it says turns two to four, on the other side it says turns one to three. You're going to shuffle it, make sure all the cards say turns one to three face up. Okay. So do that and then give it a shuffle. The game tells us that the campaign is divided into two parts. We're playing part one right now. The rules significantly change up during part two. And in fact, during part two, you'll have a different deck. The automaton will have a different deck and there'll be a different draft deck. So we've got different cards that you're going to see through the campaign. And now we're pretty much ready to begin. Chapter one. You are the famed trader, Marco Polo. You've lived in the great Yuan state for 17 years. Recently, you heard of the great mogul princess Kutulun, who is reuniting the hordes and plans to march on Europe. You must leave for Venice and warn your people. However, first, you should secure a certain item from Kublai Khan's coffers. Win this chapter to sneak past the treasury's guards, the sisters known as Tengri's cavalry, and obtain the Khan's glass cylinder. So actually, we're facing off Tengri's cavalry in chapter one. Objective six power, flip this card if you win the game. All right, so we'll set this aside. This is it. We've determined what our objective is. We have to win six power. We've got a bunch of tokens in the game. I'm going to set these up for you. This is power. We need six of these. Power is won by making successful attacks against your opponents. Power is also won through the play of certain cards. Some cards will award power. We'll see that as we get into the game. Our objective, keep this in your minds, is to win six power. If our opponent, the automaton, wins six power, we lose the game. The game will be played in rounds. A round will consist of four turns each. At the end of the round, we'll check to see if anyone has been victorious. So it could be that during the course of a round, someone may make or break six power, then lose it again before the end of the round and still not win. OK, so it's not an instant win. It's the end of each round. We'll see this as we get into gameplay. The main resource of the game that allows us to play cards is called Mythium. These are Mythium tokens. These are some wound tokens. Cards can get damaged. These are called stage counters for developing locations. We'll see this as we get into the game. And then we've got some double-sided tokens. These give plus one modifiers on one side or stationary counters on the other. This, these are counters that kind of lock down your opponent's cards. We'll see that as we get into the game. All right, let's place these aside. Here's some generic counters as well for each of the ward breakers. Finally, we've got a turn marker. This is a turn tracker board. It shows you the four turns on each round of the game and it's double sided. Start with it with the pale star at the top left. OK, and we're going to place the round tracker here on this start space. I'll show you how this works, but basically we take turns like so and we get to the end of the round. You do end of round stuff. You flip the board and then the next round starts with the other player. OK, so automaton is going to be the blue color. We're going to be the pale brown color, the beige color. All right. And what's significant about this? And this is one thing that really plays into the tactics of the game. When you're the first player on a turn, you're the last player on the turn. 
the second player will be the last player on this turn and then will begin as the start player on the next round. So you end up with two consecutive turns at the end of a round. Okay, so when we begin, the automaton will have the last turn of the first round and then the first turn of the next round. Okay, back to back turns are hugely significant to this game. We'll undoubtedly see that play out. All right, so we'll start with the round tracker like so, and we're going to have, um, let's have the round tracker like this. We'll have the round tracker like this. So we'll have the automaton up here, and we'll play below like so. This card, like I say, we start with one standing and we'll use this to track. So as our standing goes up, we'll move it up like that. We start with five Mythium, that's our starting resources. Now these are double-sided, you've got three Mythium on one side, one on the other. So we start with three, four, five Mythium, one standing in the Star Guild. We're gonna draw a hand of five cards. So we start with the first turn of the game and we are ready to play. Firstly, the game's gonna offer us an opportunity to mulligan. And this is really vital because not all these cards are gonna be useful and having a great starting hand is a perfect way to begin the game. And all right, this isn't gonna mean much to you, but it's a chance to show you the different types of cards there are. This is a follower. Follower has attack and defense. This can be used to attack our opponent and defend from attacks from our opponent. Now here's an important thing. During part one, there's a restriction that means we're not allowed to attack our opponent. So it says we can't do it. We're in defense mode. We're trying to creep through the defenses undetected as much as possible. We cannot attack them. But that doesn't mean these values aren't important. We need these followers for defense. And we've got a couple of followers actually. We've got Star's Apprentice here as well. We've also got a couple of events. So these are followers, attack and defend. These are events, these are one-off things. You play the card, follow the text, do what it says, discard the card, all right, nice and simple. And then we've got these cards, these are called locations. Now remember, I told you our objective was to score six power. These are powers. And you score power by successfully attacking your opponent. We're not allowed to attack our opponent. So the only way we can gain power is through card effects like this one. Mesmerizing Maze says I can gain one power. Right? This is gonna be our main source of power is locations. So I'm gonna keep this one. Um, it's a source of power. We're gonna need some followers because we wanna put some defense up. What about these events? Well, remember I told you also that we have a standing with our guild. We start with a standing of one. To play more advanced cards, we need to increase our standing. Now this is what this icon over to the left is. We need a standing of one to play this event. We need a standing of three to play this event. So it's a bit too soon. This is a good, a good late card event. So I might mulligan this one. And I think I'm gonna to get rid of this event as well. We'll keep a location. Remember also, I've only got five Mythium to spend. This is the cost to play the card. So if I play this event and play this follower, that's five Mythium gone. I haven't got enough to play this one. So I'm looking for ways to gain Mythium as well. Now Moth Keeper here does have a response effect that says the first time you gain power each round, gain two Mythium. So Moth Keeper is quite a nice card to keep, but so is Star's Apprentice. Um, it'll allow me to gain some standing, allows me to draw some cards. I might keep these and then we'll mulligan these two. Let's take a mulligan. We set these two cards aside. We'll draw two more cards. We've got Caravan Guard. I like that. That's a good defensive card. And then an event straight to the source. All right, that might help me. And then we'll shuffle these two back into our deck. Now on our turn, we can do one of six things. It's pretty straightforward. We can gain one Mythium, draw a card, pay two Mythium, and then gain a standing with a guild. We can play a card and pay its cost. We can develop a location. I'll show you this when we get a location into play. We need a location in play like this to then develop it and gain these extra effects. 
or we can attack. And I've already told you in part one of the campaign, we're not allowed to attack. So actually, the actions we can take are limited to these five things. So I'm going to do one of these five things. I'm going to play a card. All right. This is my hand. I'm going to be playing cards into my play area here. I'm going to play this event. It says straight to the source. Before you play this card's cost, reveal up to two location cards from your hand. I've got one location card. Straight to the source, this card here, costs one Mythium less for each card you reveal. So normally this would cost two. It's only going to cost me one because I revealed one location. So I'm going to pay one Mythium, play this event, and the event says gain three Mythium. Perfect. So I've paid one and gained three. Then discard this card. That ends my action. Action now goes to my opponent. That's how you play an action on your turn. Nice and simple. Incidentally, we're playing on what's called the World Breaker difficulty, the most difficult and indeed default difficulty. But if you want to make the game easier, because this can be tough, you can play the Warrior difficulty, which says if you fail twice in a row, third time, start with one power. Or you can play an easier game called the Scholar, where you begin every game with one power. Or the easiest difficulty, where you start every game with two power. That's called Artisan difficulty. Right. There we go. We're going to try and get all six power. As it goes, it's the automaton's turn now. And it's their turn one. So we look at their automaton deck. It's actually called the Orders deck. These are order cards. Turns one and three. We're on turn one. So they're going to follow this instruction. The automaton has no hand, has no mythium. It doesn't need to pay costs. So it can't gain or spend mythium. It doesn't need any standing. So it's not limited to what cards it can play by a standing in a guild. And because it has no hand, it doesn't draw cards. Instead, it's going to be putting cards into play from its deck. Now, this one is the recruit action. It's going to take the recruit action. Put the top card of your opponent's deck. So that's this card. Your opponent here refers to the automaton into play. So we flip this and it's got a Kalari Adept. It's a warrior with one strength and one defense. And then it says flip this card. So we're going to turn this onto its other side. So this is a neat little clever mechanism. If you see a recruit, chances are there's going to be a charge on the other side. Your opponent attacks with all of its ready followers on turns two and four. Okay, two and four. So we know that the adept is going to attack next time with its one attack and one defense. When this attack comes through, unless we have anyone to block that attack, it's going to hit us. It doesn't matter what this number is. It could be one, it could be two, it could be 10, 20. It doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. An attack comes through, they gain one power. All right? Remember the target is that they gain six power. So we don't want that attack to come through. So our response now, turn comes back to us, is perhaps to play some kind of defender, someone who can block this attack. And Caravan Guard is pretty good. Caravan Guard has an ability that says it's stationary, which basically means it cannot attack. Right? But it's got two attack and four defense. This is a good, strong, solid defender. This is its attack strength. It's going to attack for two. It's got a defense of Four, it can take four damage and then it's defeated. It's going to cost us two. Notice this is a neutral card. It doesn't have an alignment with a particular guild like our event card did that had the star symbol. And we needed one standing with star and it has this star banner. This is a neutral card. Okay. It's going to cost us two. This is a three. If we flip it to a one, we've spent two. All right, so it's a neat little way of managing your resources here. That's it. We've played our action back to the automaton. And we know they're going to charge. Your opponent attacks with all of its ready followers. Ready means it's not exhausted. So we move this card forward, we exhaust it, and it's going to attack with its one attack. Now if we choose to not block it, it'll come through 
and attack us. We don't do damage per se, but it wins one power. Okay, that world breaker has become more powerful. Or we can choose to move a defender forward, like the caravan guard, exhaust it, and block this attack. That's what we're going to do. Notice the adept has a gain one mythium ability. The automaton would be gaining a mythium now, but they don't gain and spend mythium. We'll just ignore those effects. All right, the caravan guard blocks. They both now attack each other, and this is kind of simultaneous. Okay, so the Kalari Adept does one damage. We take these wound counters to the caravan guard, and the caravan guard does two damage to the Kalari Adept. If the damage is now equal or greater than its defense, that follower is removed from play, discarded. Okay, they, they're defeated. So two damage against one defense, this one's defeated. One damage, four defense, the caravan guard stands strong. So this card is discarded. Well, Thompson has completed their turn. It says charge, so it's done its charge. Now discard this card. This card is now discarded, all right? So we'll discard that here. Next time, they're gonna recruit on turn three. Back to us. All right, nice and simple. Now we've got an opportunity because they don't have any attackers right now. We could play our maze. We could play our moth keeper. We've got five left. Uh, let's play the mesmerizing maze. It's gonna cost three mythium to play. Right, how do these work? We're gonna play this in the back line here. Pay the cost, which was three. three resources, three mythium. Now it's got two abilities on here. They're called stage abilities. And this is where we put these tokens. We grab these little tokens and we cover both stages. These stages will get resolved from top to bottom, but it takes an action. The action is develop a location. So if we choose on our turn to do develop a location, we remove the topmost stage counter and then execute this effect. So we would gain one, that's a star, that's one standing with our guild, and then gain one power. But that's a separate action. We've already, we've done our action for this turn. We played a card. Now what you'll notice is Marco Polo has an ability. After you play a location, exhaust Marco to reveal the top card of your deck. So let's re uh, exhaust Marco. And it says, if it's a follower, draw it, otherwise put it on the bottom. So we'll exhaust marker, draw the top card. It's a location, so it's not a follower, it goes on the bottom of our deck. All right, and this is Marco's got this ability then to have followers come through and kind of cycle through your deck to get followers into your hand. We'll need a follower to put up a defense. So there it is, and we've got our first location in play. This is our route to gaining power. All right. All right, completed our turn. We played a location back to the automaton. Turn three, they're going to recruit, put the top card of their deck into play. And it is Airag Maker. This one has got two attack and two defense. It gains a standing with any guild when it enters play, but remember, automaton doesn't gain standing. Okay, uh, flip this card once it's resolved. It's now going to charge. Now the problem is we've got a follower in play, but it's exhausted. We can't defend with the caravan because a defender has to be ready in order to block. So we've got a couple of choices. We can either let the attack go through, in which case they will win a power for having an unblocked attack. But there's a double whammy here. If a block goes through undefended, it does two things. First, it hits me for power. But also, they can remove the top stage counter from a location. So attacks that go through unblocked do damage to locations. Sometimes you want, you don't mind. I mean, that means I'm maybe I'm not interested in the top power. It would do a damage here. I wouldn't be able to develop this and gain this effect. But it does mean next time I develop, I'll be able to develop the bottom one instead. All right, so there's a benefit sometimes to letting attacks go through. But in this instance, I don't want it to. This is my only way to gain power. Makes sense? Hopefully it'll make sense if we see it happen. 
Right, turns back to me. I really want to put another blocker. I've got two followers here. The Star's Apprentice actually costs three. I've only got two Mythium. So as my action, I'm going to put Moth Keeper into play. It's going to cost me two Mythium. I need one standing with the guild, which I've got. Stationary can't attack. And then it says response. The first time each round you gain power, gain two Mythium. But it's got one attack and three defense. Back to them. They're going to charge your opponent attacks with all of its new ready followers and then discard this card. So Erag Maker is charging with its two attack and two defense. I'm going to block with the Moth Keeper. I do one damage to them, they do two damage to me. Now as it goes, they've got two health, I've got three, both are left unkilled. Now the turn doesn't pass back to me, they've reached the rally phase. Let's just twist this so we can see what it says. It says, perform any rally abilities. If any of the cards in play had rally abilities, we'd perform them now. They don't. Ready cards, so the readying means they're unexhausted. So our two blockers are now back up and available, as is their one attacker. Each player gains two Mythium. Automaton doesn't collect Mythium. We absolutely do. It's our lifeblood. Oh, Marco should be readied as well. Draw a card. So we draw a card from the top of our deck. Automaton never draws cards. What did we get? All right, we've got another location, the Submerged Brilliance. Uh, check for victory. Okay, the important part. Has anybody got six power? No, not yet. And now we flip the player order. Okay, so we flip this board. First player now is Automaton. Okay, so they've got two back-to-back -back turns. And it's turn one, what they're going to do, they're going to recruit. Put the top card of your opponent's deck into play and then flip this card. And they've got the Dog Tamer. Um, it says, enters play, migrate, gain three Mythium. They don't have Mythium. Right, now they've got two attackers. Now next time they're going to mobilise. And this is one thing that you'll learn about the solo game is you can kind of look ahead a little bit. So next time they're going to put a 1-1 one, one counter on a follower it controls and then attacks with all of its ready followers. So these guys are going to attack with one of them having a boost up. That's their turn complete. Oh, mobilize. Okay. All right, what am I going to do about it? Well, I've got two blockers, so I think I can handle that. Well, I've only got two cards. I could think about getting some more Mythium. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use the Develop a Location action. We'll develop the Mesmerizing Maze. Now, as I said, you can't develop the bottom one. You have to do them in order from top to bottom. And you can only develop one that has a stage counter on it. So we're going to gain a standing with the Star Guild. Like I said earlier, you can only develop from top to bottom, and you can only develop where there's a stage counter. So if this had gotten removed because of an unblocked attack, I couldn't do this one now. I can only do this one. Um, and I have to do from top to bottom, so I can only do this one. Gain one standing with the Star Guild, okay? And then gain one power. Brilliant. So I'll get one power. So we're one to zero ahead, our target being six. Now, Moth Keeper has a uh, response effect. The first time each round you gain power, gain two Mythium. So I'm going to gain two Mythium. I'll just flip that over. So we've gone from two to four. That's a response effect. And it's the first time. So we can't do that again. But that will set us up nicely for the next turn. All right, Automaton is going to mobilize. Your opponent puts a plus one, plus one counter on a follower it controls with the least remaining health. This one's got one remaining health. The dog tamer has also got one remaining health. How do we decide? There's a reference card to help us. It says, whenever the automaton must choose a card, it follows these guidelines. Ready cards before exhausted. They're both ready. Highest standing requirement. They both have one standing requirement. Highest mythium cost. Okay, Erag Maker has a mythium cost of two. 
dog team a one, so they're going to put the plus one plus one counter, which is one of those, on the Arag Maker. The plus one plus one means this is now a three attack, three defense card. Ouch. And then he's going to attack with all of its ready followers. So this is a three three. This is a one one. Ouch. Now I think I'm going to block. Hmm. That's really messed because I could have defeated both of them if it wasn't for this. But now this thing's got three health. If I block with the caravan guards, I'll do two damage. That will defeat it. But he's going to do uh, three damage to me, which will defeat my caravan guard. Hmm. Interesting. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to have the caravan guard finish them off. And then we'll have the moth keeper block the dog tamer. I'm going to lose both of mine. They're going to lose both of theirs. If I did it the other way around, let's see what would happen. If I did it the other way around, then I would keep my caravan guard, keep, uh, keep the Arag maker would still be standing. Dog tamer will be gone. Maybe I'll do it this way around and see what happens. Yeah, let's do that. So that's two damage on here, one damage on here. Dog Tamer's defeated. And then three damage on the Moth Keeper, which kills it. One damage on here. Eric Maker stands still. Interesting. So that's defeated. That's defeated. Okay. Discard this card. They're going to recruit next time. So recruit and charge. So I probably need another blocker. This card can't attack because it's already exhausted. They're going to be attacking with just one attacker. So I'm going to put Star's Apprentice into play. It's going to cost three Mythian. And when it enters play, I gain a standing with the Star Guild. So I'm up to three standing, which doesn't help me right now, but it means we're pretty much into, I'm fully developed in terms of Guild standing. I can play any of my cards, I think. Right, back to him. So he's going to recruit. Let's see what he gets. Eagle Huntress. Oh dear. Uh, drew two cards. Yeah, draw two cards when it enters place. We ignore that. That doesn't do anything. It's a two-two attacker. Flip this card back to us. Remember, we can't attack, so we can't do the initiative and and attack them. I haven't got enough Mythium to play this. Um, oh, hang on. I forgot this ability. Star's Apprentice says when it enters play, if you control the location, I do draw a card. So I should have drawn a card. Let's see what it is. Another location. That doesn't help. Um, humble underpass. Not yet, anyway, but next time. So I could develop my maze. I could gain a mythium. I could draw a card. I could gain guild standing, but it's going to cost me two mythium. So I can't do that just yet, but I don't think I need to. Instead, what I think I'm going to do is develop this location. Mesmerizing maze. So I remove this stage counter and perform this. Gain one power. So I've now got two power. Excellent. And then it says you may put a stationary counter on a follower. Nice. So stationary counters are these. Pick a follower. I'm going to put this on the Eagle Huntress. Stationary means they can't attack. So I've neutralized that charge, that card there, the Huntress. So I feel safe. I didn't actually have to play that blocker, did I? Never mind. All right. Mesmerizing Maze now has no stage counters left. What happens to a location that has no stage counters left? We discard it. It's done its job. It's finished. It's fully developed. So that card goes in my discard pile. Okay. Back to them. They're going to charge. Your opponent attacks with all of its ready followers. This one's not ready. This one can't attack because it's stationary. This charge does nothing. We just discard that card. Job done. Next time it's going to recruit, but that'll be on the next round because now the 
turn his back to us. Now this is a good time to play locations, but I don't have enough Mythium. Hmm. So I think, yeah, that's a shame. I think all I'm going to do, all I'm going to do is, do I draw a card or do I gain Mythium? I'm going to get two at the end of the round, which gives me three. This is enough to play this location, which gains two, and then draw. Yeah, I'm going to draw a card. I think. Yep. Here we get a, uh, an event, Proof of the Grotto. Play a card paying one Mythium less for each standing you have across all three guilds. Okay, that's a great card. But for now, we've reached the end of the phase. So any rally abilities? No. Ready all of our cards. Okay. Game two, Mythium. Let's flip that over to the three side. Draw a card. Surprising development is an event. Before you play, pay this card's cost, damage a location you control. And it costs three less, and I gave five. Right, that's a great Mythium generation card. So I've got lots of Mythium potentially, but nothing to spend it on. Uh, check for victory. No, I've got two, they've got zero. Flip player order. We're first player again. All right. So we've got three Mythium. We're probably going to put a location into play. We know they're going to recruit and then charge. And with this card, it says damage a location you control to have surprising development cost three less. I don't have a location, so I can't do that bit. But I can still, I can still, um, I can still play it. But it's just gonna cost me the full three. But I think we're just going to pay two, pay two and put the humble underpass into play. It costs two. It's got two stages. Now we've played a location, we can do Marco's ability. Response, after you play a location, exhaust Marco Polo, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a follower, draw it. If not, stick it on the bottom. Okay, so Marco's exhausted. Is it, fo it is a follower, the Sly Sentinel. Okay, so that's coming into my hand, I'm drawing it. All right, I think that's, yeah. We don't, I'm not sure we need a follower at this time because they've got, only one attacker, potentially. Okay, back to them. They're gonna recruit, put the top card from their deck into play. So I'm gonna have three followers now. This is a two, one gallant soldier. So two attack, but only one defense. And then flip this card, so they're gonna charge. No, it's an unrelenting. So not every recruit has a charge on the back. This time, it says if any of them has to have a stationary counter, they're going to remove it. So the Huntress is going to come back into play. It'll stop them attacking because they just removed that stationary. But three attackers, hmm. we should probably think about putting a follower into play if we can. Back to us. So maybe we do want another follower. We've only got one Mythium though, right? So... We could play this event, Proof of the Grotto. It's going to cost one. It only needs one standing, so we'll pay the one. Play a card, paying one Mythium less for each standing you have across all guilds. Right, so this is an event. We pay it, and it says we can immediately play a card. Our standing is three across all guilds, so it's the sum. If we had standing in other guilds, you'd add them all up. So three less for another card. And we can play Sly Sentinel. It costs three. Take away three zeros. We're going to play this for free. It only needs one, so we're putting uh, Sentinel into play. It's stationary. It can't attack, but it doesn't matter. It's got a nice ability, a block ability. We'll see that um, very soon. <laughs> okay, back to them. They are unrelenting. So if any of your opponent's followers has a stationary counter, remove the stationary counter. Done. Otherwise, okay, ignore the otherwise because they did the first part and then discard this card. All right, next time they're going to recruit and then they'll probably charge. So now they'll have four attackers. So they're going to recruit and attack. 
and then rally and then probably attack again, maybe recruit again. So we've got a dodgy moment coming up. Back to us. So I feel like these blockers can do their thing. But I think I'm going to develop the humble underpass before it takes any damage. I'm keen on the first one. It's gain two mythium and, and one power. The next one's gain two mythium and a standing. I'm not really interested in standing, but I, so I do want to take this. I do want to take this. So I'm going to develop this location for my action. Gain two mythium and one power. Okay. Gain one power. I'm going from two to three power. So these power tokens have three on the back. So I've got three power. I'm halfway to where I need to be. And we're getting two mythium. I don't have the moth keeper in play. That was a shame. Remember, she was gaining two mythium each time you gain power. Right, that's my turn. Next, they're going to recruit a weary veteran. They don't have standing, so we ignore the enter's play ability. But they do have four attackers now. Flip this card and it is going to be a charge. So they're going to be charging with all four of these on their next turn, which is coming up. So I've got three blockers. At least one of them is going to come get through. But I do have Sly Sentinel. That's my trump card. Now let's see. I've got a surprising development, which I could play. I could develop this location, gain two Mythium. Or I could draw a card. I haven't got any followers. I feel like I need some more followers. I might just draw a card as my final action. I'm probably going to lose one, two or three of these. Yeah. And the other option is I play this event now. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. If I put this into play, Marco's going to draw me a card. And this has got draw two cards, so maybe I don't need it. This I've got some drawing card abilities coming up. Maybe I will play this event. Okay, before you play this card's cost, damage a location you control. We'll damage the humble, un humble underpass. I keep saying humble underpants as well. Humble underpants, the pass, see. Um, uh, so I don't get to do this one. This card's discarded. It has no stage tokens uh, counters left. Which means this costs three less. So it goes down to a zero cost card. We'll play this event and it gains me five Mythium. One, two, three, four, five. Lovely. Back to them. They're going to charge with all of its ready attackers. So these guys are all charging. Well, and then we discard this card. They're going to recruit next time. But let's think about blocking. Now, the Sly Sentinel has a crazy ability. It says blocks removed from combat an attacking follower other than the follower Sly Sentinel is blocking. So we could block the weary veteran with the caravan. This is a 3 3, isn't it? We could block the uh, Arab maker with the apprentice. And then Sly Sentinel, it's got two attack and three defense. Could take out the Eagle Huntress. How about that? And remove the gallant soldier from battle. Okay, let's try that. So starting here, Weary Veteran's going to do one damage to the Caravan Guard, so that puts them at three and they still stand. Caravan Guard's going to do two damage here and defeat the Weary Veteran. Okay, done. Star's Apprentice has got a 2-2 two, two against a 3-3, three, three. so he's going to take three damage and get defeated, but do two damage and defeat this one as well. Okay, so they've kind of exchanged. And then lastly, Sly Sentinel is a 2 3. So it does 2 damage to Eagle Huntress and defeats it, takes 2 damage, but has 3 defense. So that's out of here as well. So we're left in this situation. That's not too bad, I don't think.
Gallant Soldier is going to make an attack next time because we now have the rally phase. Um, oh no, they're going to recruit. Yeah, possibly. We'll see what happens. Right, rally, none. Ready all of our cards. So Marco is readied. Our followers are readied. We gain two Mythium. So I'll flip that one over. So I've got a good supply of Mythium now. We draw a card. And we've got an event, Exploitative Extraction. Um, develop a location you control X number of times, whatever we pay. I don't have any locations. That wasn't a good timing for that card. Check for victory. Well, I've got three. They've still got zero. Flip player order. And then they're going to go first again. So they're going to recruit. Put the top card into play. It's a lowly bard. It's a 1-1 one, one attacker. And then flip this card and it's going to be a charge, right? So they're attacking with these two, which is probably going to neutralize things big time. Because we can block, but I don't have to block. I think I probably will. So let's see. Let's put the submi uh, submerged brilliance into play. It costs three mythium. It's got three stages, so three stage counters. One, two, three. End our turn. Oh no, Marco, Marco. Marco is going to look at the top card. It's an event, so that goes on the bottom. We're looking for followers. Come on, because things are going to get a little bit dodgy soon. Right, back to them. They've got charge and then discard this. So they're attacking with everybody. Discard this. And I'm going to recruit next time. So do I block? I think I do. Hmm. Do I remove from combat an attacking follower other than Sly? I'm just thinking about what to do. I mean, I could just use Sly Sentinel or remove one from combat, but I'm not sure that really achieves me very much. These effects are not compulsory. It's a may. I may block if I wish. So I may remove, but I'm just going to block and block. Um, block and block, yeah. So two damage here, one damage here, two damage back, two damage back. Everyone is defeated. So, I mean, it wasn't great. I could have let the, the block, the attack go through. I chose not to. All right, that's what we've done. As it goes... <laughs> I've got a rather juicy event now. Exploitative extraction. Pay X. I need a standing of three, which I've got. At least three. Um, in X must be less than or equal to your standing. So three. I can pay three. Do the following X times. So three times develop a location you control. So I can develop this location three times. That's my action. So first one, draw two cards, gain two Mythium. Lovely. I've now got five. Gain one power. So I'm starting with three. I've now got four. And then standing with any guild, so four. I don't need standing with other guilds. I mean, I could get a standing with a different guild, but there's no need. I've only got star cards in my deck. And then third, gain one power. So I'm at five power. I need one more. Excellent. And then Submerge Brilliance is done. <laughs> was an awesome turn. Back to them. Recruit. So they're going to bring a card into play. A skillful bruiser. Three attack. Now this one says Overwhelm. When it defeats a blocker, it gains one power. So... They're going to start gaining some power quickly now. Uh, flip this card. Yeah, so they're going to charge. And I haven't got a follower to put into play. Oh, I do. I've got. I've just drawn one. Polo's Portraitist. Or I've got this Silkworm Terrarium. I only need one more power, don't I? I only need one more power. So actually... Actually... And so this star card, that just means it's part of your starting deck. 
right? So all the cards with stars, grab them. Those are your starting decks when you're beginning the game if you're not playing draft mode. Hidden. Silkworm Terrarium is hidden. Your opponent cannot damage this location. So, I think actually I don't care. I'm going to pay two. Play this location. Marco's ability is already used. It's got two on it. So some locations are hidden. Now remember, if his attack comes through unblocked, he can damage a location. But hidden means they can't. Okay. So he's going to charge. Your opponent attacks with all of its followers. Discard this card. Skillful Bruce is going to attack. I'm not blocking, so Overwhelm's not doing anything. He's going to hit me and gain a power. I'm not blocking. I didn't put my follower in. Now, normally he'd be removing this, you see, but this is a hidden location. We're still safe. Back to me. I'm going to develop the Silkworm Terrarium. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. This has got enters play, discard a card. I mean, this is a really powerful card, so there is. Discard it <laughs> to develop a location you control. I can develop this location, gain one power. Yeah. Then he's going to hit me for one. It makes no difference. I could just play this, or I could just do this now. Gain one power. Develop this location. Gain a power. I've got my six. The turn comes back to me. We enter the rally phase. Ready, ready, ready. Check for victory. I've got my six power. That's it. We are victorious. Wow. <laughs> this is a good card. Polo's Portraitist. Players cannot attack for the remainder of the round. Playing this just completely nullifies your opponent. Wow. There we go. Right. What happens next? So we've won the campaign. We got our six power. We defeated them in the rally phase. Gather up your deck. Okay, so gather up all your cards. These are all my cards, this one as well. Gather up their 12 cards, gather up their deck. All right, so remember that's their deck, that's their thing. This is me, lovely. This all goes, this is ready for next time. Okay, we're gonna give that a shuffle up again next time. We're gonna shuffle up our deck, blah, blah, blah. All right, so if you don't want to know what happens next, look away. But I want to show you what happens next because this is cool. This is neat. This is what the campaign is all about. I'm not really spoiling it. It's only chapter one. So flip this card if you win the game. Okay. All right, ready? Prepare the draft deck. Remember our draft deck. Okay. Draw three cards out of six choices and add them to your deck. Okay. So we shuffle up, shuffle up the draft deck. And it says to draw three cards out of six. So we're going to draw six cards. Put these aside. They're going to come back later in the game, potentially. That's the remaining draft deck. And we get to choose three of these however we wish. Okay. Now what you'll notice is some of these belong to the void to the Void Guild. So we could potentially be going in for a mixed guild deck. I mean, this is a nice card. It needs three standing with Void. So what are the chances? I mean, I don't know. Most of our deck is Star. Deal two wounds to each of up to three followers. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic to take out an opponent. But are we going to be able to get three standing with Void? I want to think about that. The difficulty and the painful decision here is that whatever cards we discard, we don't choose, they're out of the campaign forever. They don't go and come back. They go back to the box, right? They don't go back in the draft deck. If we don't draft them now, we're never going to see them again. But whatever three cards we draw now, it says, are going to go in our deck. We've got a Mythium Fund. Look at that. It costs five, but gains us nine. So that's a net of four. A Yam Operator. When it enters play... Play an event card, playing one card less. It's nice to have a follower. We've got another location here. But again, this is a void location. Gain one void standing and one power. Gain one power. I mean, that might help us with this. Throws of Fancy. This is a three-star card. 
Reveal cards from the top of your deck until you reveal a follower and a location. Draw them both and shuffle your deck. That's quite nice to find the cards you want. Baleful Viper here gains a guild standing with Void, the Baleful Viper. After Baleful Viper wounds a follower, defeat the follower. So it only does one attack, but it's got three defense and this lovely response effect. Breach is when attack goes through unblocked, will gain the Viper a standing. Yeah, maybe I'll take these three. They're nice cards. All right, so these will go out. I was tempted by this follower, but we've got a follower here. We've got an event and a location. They're perhaps a nice mix. And we're now into a dual guild deck. These go back to the box. They're out of the game. Okay, then it says, gather the following card and add it to your opponent's starting play deck, the Champion of Tumen. This is the Champion of Tumen, so she's come out of the box. A follower, a 4-2 attacker with Overwhelm. That's one powerful follower. So Automaton has gotten a little bit stronger. Then it says replace recruit charge order with inspire charge. So we take a recruit charge, throw it out back in the box and replace it with inspire charge. And then it says read rules, uh, new rules too, and have it ready for future games. New rules. So new rules are your opponent now starts each game with one standing. Gather the following cards and store them here. Okay, so we're going to store four cards. Poised Duelist, Forbidden Guru, Sparring Braggart, and Astute Tactician. And then when my opponent has reached two standing. So now when Automaton gains standing, they're going to gain standing. When they gain two standing, shuffle all cards stored here into your opponent's play deck. So at some point when they gather enough standing, Inspire says increase your opponent's guild standing. So Inspire is now doing something. When that card pushes their standing to two, they start with one. Poised Duelist, Forbidden Guru, Sparring Braggart and Astute Tactician are going to come into their play deck. Okay. So things have just stepped up a level. Okay. All right, that's it. And then we push on with chapter two. Objective seven power. <laughs> Here they are. These are the four new ones out of the Earth Guild. We're going to store them under this card and then keep them to one side. Like I say we're shuffling in the Champion of Two Men into their deck. And then this one goes in. So it's still a deck of 12 orders, but when Inspire comes out, make sure everything shows one and three. One and three, one and three. When Inspire comes out, these extra followers are going to come into this deck. All right, so six power was la objective last time. This time it's seven power. We've got some tougher foes, but these are now in our deck. All right, so Baleful Viper, Pernicious Powder is going to be excellent to pull that one off. Wow, I'd love to pull that off. Okay, there we go. Chapter one completes. Marco Polo's standing goes back to one. We draw a hand of five cards. We're ready to play chapter two. That's it. Great stuff. Well, that's World Breakers, Advent of the Canate. I don't want to spoil too much of the chapters. Ten, ten different chapters in here split in parts one and two tons of solo gameplay to enjoy. I hope you've enjoyed this little demonstration. See you next time.